last. N names are important. Um, okay. We all make mistakes, but if you could conduct yourselves in a way that shows our witness respect, okay, I'd appreciate Janice, it. Okay, it's by the way, but uh, that's a good point. Yeah, to this William's uh, son. I realize. If we're, if we're that, insisting, so. right, uh, you have a minute and a half left, Mr. Jenkins. Okay, uh, uh, sir, uh, you you have you have uh, on your LinkedIn profile uh, a claim that you were simultaneously working for the government and. Uh, leading Dalian. You told this committee on October the 31st, pardon me, not this committee, but you told that committee on October 31st that you were uh, working, uh, you were on the board of directors for Dalian. You were at the time employed by the government. Um, and, 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 and you have subsequently said, oh, no, 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 I, I, uh, there, was, there was some flux going on. But you clearly were in a conflict of interest, weren't you, sir? You were clearly doing both at the same time. And now you're trying to weasel your way out of it after the fact. But you were clearly in a conflict of interest, were you not? So, OK, so I, I need to answer the LinkedIn side of it first. First of all, it's a non-authoritative source, and it's on the internet. It's and your it profile. Say, it, did say, it did say 1987. Did you write it? It did not describe all of my service that I have done. I have done 14 years in the Reg Force, 10 years in the Reserves, 20 years as a contractor. I've had 36 years in the department. Did, did you subcontract the writing of your LinkedIn profile, sir? I probably uh, should have or should have. Uh, you have time for So I question. needed to answer your question. You, you asked me a question, and I'm trying to answer it, okay? Um, the department has, has deemed... Were, were, were you not in a conflict not, of interest in, no. being on the board of directors of Dalian no. at the same time as you were an employee of a department that was giving contracts to a company that you, according to your testimony before Parliament... Okay we're on the board of directors of. Thank you, Mr. Jenner. That is your time. Is I will allow for an answer, please. Yes, I, I will oh, allow you to answer, Mr. Jenner. Your time has expired. You have the floor, thanks, sir. Mr. Chair. Yeah. Um, so um, my understanding is that D&D has made a statement that there was no conflict of interest. Period. Thank you. Uh, turning now to Ms. Well, that puts it to rest then, doesn't it? Uh, turning now to Ms. Bradford, you have the floor for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Mr. Yo, uh, getting back to your aborted political career, where you were a candidate for the PPC. Um, do you not, a party that was against vaccine mandates, do you not see any hypocrisy in working on an ArriveCan app that was designed to track people's vaccine records and when you sure. actually didn't believe in the vaccine mandates in the first place and were running for a party, you know, that actually took that position? Yeah, there, there's definitely a why as to why, and thank you for the question. Uh, there was a why as to why I was trying to become a member of Parliament, much like you folks uh, around the table today. And, and I wish somebody would ask me about that at some point during this time period, uh, because it's a much different answer than you think. Um, second of all, you know, when it comes to vaccine mandates, um, I'm buried two gates deep at D&D, &D, and then at nights and weekends, I'm doing work with the PPC uh, for the election. And so, you know, from, from my side of it, um, I had no, you know, visibility into uh, a low-level contract that was with a staff augmentation contract with CBSA and the work that was going on, you know, for that, the Arrive Can. We were doing a much more work than, than just Arrive Can, and, and so I had no visibility at the time. So I just want you to go back again because I'm a bit confused. Are you saying, I think a previous answer was that Dalian... And you personally actually did no actual work on the RiveCan app. You subcontracted it all. Is that correct? You didn't actually do any actual work on well, that. I mean, like we're 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 prime contractors on a staff augmentation contract that staffs you know subject matter experts into CBSA to actually perform the work, like to code the application and project management and security and everything else. Um, so so saying we don't do any work is a little. Um, uh, not true, but the, but at the end of the day, you know, we do subcontract out that work to subject matter experts that do eventually make their way into CBSA to actually perform the work. Yes. So you got 18.2% commission rate on the 4.9 million arrived can contract. Is that correct? That's about $89,000 in commission. That's, that's what my uh, staff has told me is 18.2. Yeah. So how much was your overhead and uh, how much was the remaining profit? I'd have to go and, and ask our CFO to, uh, to try and figure that out. But we have, 
you know, my office in 222 Somerset, uh, we have uh, employees, commissions, everything else like that. So uh, I'm not sure what the exact number is, to be honest but, with you. But most of the work is subcontracted out to others, that's correct? Absolutely. Yeah, like it's sub, in some cases, uh, it's our own, you know, uh, consulting um, bench that goes out to do this. And in some cases, uh, you know, we did we did some work with GC. So. Now, if you're the majority shareholder in the company, what percentage of the net profit do you get? Well, that's that's again, that's a question of you know how many ex how much expenses are within the company. But um, you know, in normal shareholder perspective, if you are a majority shareholder and you have minority shareholders, at the end of the year, everybody's T five out as far as dividends is concerned. If we have a profit. So going back to when you formed your company in 2001 or 2002, basically Dalian was formed to go after Indigenous contracts? Uh, yeah, absolutely, because of my background and heritage, yeah. Right. So then if you subcontract everything else out to other companies, uh, they don't have to be Indigenous service providers? No, not necessarily. I mean, you know, I helped Alan Frost with a number of other companies uh, start the uh, PSAB. He had already got it going, but we had, uh, you know, helped him formulate uh, some of the policies back then. And, uh, and it was basically for entrepreneurs that needed to have access to government contracts. Uh, so from that perspective, um, it was all about having ownership in the company and having the ability to grow the company through government contracts and then potentially either start another company or potentially hire employees and keep growing your own business. It was, uh, it's a very good policy. Okay, now in your uh, testament, testimony, um, Mr. Yeo, you mentioned that you provided your signature to your staff to use when needed. Um, do you think that was appropriate under the circumstances looking back on it? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, you know, I was divesting myself from the company. I was, had no hands on the on the business after the 19th of September, and actually prior to that. And uh, and they still need to get stuff signed. So um, you see that all the time in big corporations, you know, where uh, there's signatures provided. I think a person's signature indicates that you're personally tied into that contract or that deal. I I think people don't look at a signature thinking. Well, that's not really, Mr. Yo. That's just, you know, just somebody else that is signing for Mr. Yo. I think they would probably think that you were overseeing it or responsible and to stand uh, behind your signature. Yeah, yeah. Ultimately, you know, I own the company and I'm responsible, right? And I've taken that hit and I'm no longer with D&D &D, and my company's been terminated as far as all contracts are concerned. So I'm taking the direct hit on this. And but what I can tell you is that this, is, this does happen. Yeah. And thank you. That is the time. Uh, beginning our, our third round with Mr. Nader, you have the floor for five minutes, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you, Mr. Yo, for uh, for joining us uh, this afternoon. Uh, I want to clarify a, a few things. Um, can you confirm that you resigned from the public service on March 5th, 2024? Is that correct? March the 5th, 2024. That is correct, yep. Yeah. Uh, now, you'd say that D&D had made a statement that there was no conflict of interest. Um, was that made directly to you, or who made the no. call? No, it was, out on, it was out in the media outlets, yeah. Did you ever receive a report from D&D &D related to the conflict of interest? Uh, no. There was, it was an alleged conflict that somebody put up, I guess. Um, and, uh, you know, and, and, and what I've heard in the papers, and, and I know in my own heart, um, there was no conflict. So you never received a report on March 3rd um, of a conflict of interest report from the Department of National Defense? I did not, no. Okay. We will call, follow up on that another time. Um, you mentioned that you had been a consultant for a number of years um, with the Department of National Defense. Um, I think often we, we see examples of consultants who work within the department almost uh, parallel to or often uh, in conjunction and uh, integrated with um, public servants. Um, did you ever personally have such a relationship at D&D &D in which you uh, worked at uh, D&D HQ or worked closely with uh, full-time uh, indeterminate public servants during your time as a consultant? Well, the, the way the consultant uh, aspect works for most of the departments is that uh, absolutely you are the subject matter expert 
layer within the directorate and you have absolutely public servants that manage you on a day-to-day -day basis. So the interactions there, yeah, absolutely. So very similar to an employment situation, although you would be on a contract rather than uh, an employee of His Majesty's Public Service. Is that correct? Yeah, I'm not sure I'd go with the employment side of it. You're there as a contractor, right? So um, through TBIPS, through SBIPS, through PS Online, or one of those other uh, staff augmentation contracts. Um, and then that, there's a pretty clear line. You have zero uh, ability to do, sign off or do anything as a consultant, right? So, And, and during that period, uh, were you physically working at D&D HQ? Uh, not at HQ, no. No, I, I worked for uh, ADM Matt. Uh, which is actually under uh, um, uh, DGLEPM, under the Army side of it. But you did work at a government office? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, well, I was a part of the whole directorate for 22 years, yeah. Okay, but at, at a government office. Okay. When was the first time you cashed, uh, cashed a check or e-transfer um, for your Arrive Can app work? When was the first time you received payment? You mentioned $4.9 over three years. What was the, yeah. first, the date of the first payment receipt? Like, are you talking about a like commission or something like that? No, the first payment from the government for your work on Arrive Can. Oh yeah, I, I'm not sure if that's there. I'd have to check with our CFO shop. I'm, I don't have that detail on me. Yeah. Okay, I'd, I'd appreciate getting that information on the first date they received, as well as the last date. Are you able to tell us approximately when that last um, payment came through? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, our CFO shop would have all of that detail, and we would provide that to you on a timely basis for sure. Okay. I, I would appreciate Thank you. that. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, I was I was thanking the witness. I just uh, acknowledging his his agreement. So you've got a ninety seconds to go. Sorry, Mr. Neal. No, no, thank you, thank you, Mr. Thank Chair. You. Um, you'd mentioned you had mentioned in your opening statements um, how you were either putting your interests in Dalian into a blind trust, or you had already put them into a blind trust when you joined the public service. Can you clarify what you meant by a blind trust? Oh, sure. So you, when you do a divestiture, there's lawyers involved and you have to divest your shares. You have to put them in uh, to a trustee and, and there's a lot of documentation back and forth in order to facilitate that. And, uh, and we did start that uh, right away. Uh, my meetings with my lawyers and things like that happened November uh, all the way through, uh, you know, into January. And, and we put the non-disclosure, non-access in with Dalian at the same time. And, uh, and eventually, we did put in all of our documents with D&D. Um, but um, could, in hindsight, I'll be honest with you, in hindsight, uh, knowing what I know now and, and the whole situation that, uh, that we've run up against here, um, there's a, a direct response from me that uh, I should have put all of that in, you know, even previous to signing the offer. And I should have done all of that prior to even looking at the offer from the government. So uh, that one's on me, uh, but uh, at the end of the day, all of the information to get well, to where it I, to go. I, I'm gonna push you a little bit on this. Um, you know, sure. when, when we hear the term of blind trust, I mean, it, it's tough to see how a blind trust would work when you were the founder and, and, and majority shareholder of a corporation uh, named Dalian, which, you know, you can't all of a sudden forget you own whether it's uh, visible in a blind trust or not, but you also use the term divesting your, your interests in it. So I'm not entirely clear which one you were trying to do were you trying to put uh, your your corporation to blind trust which again I'm not sure how uh, how arm's length that could be or were you divesting yourself of your corporation at that time we know now you're back I guess back in full swing uh, with the company but what was actually your intent at the time was it to have it in an arm's length uh, untouchable uh, entity of a blind trust or were you divesting were you selling off your shares were you divesting yourself um, of, of your corporation at the time it's not clear what you were doing while you were acting as a member of the Public Service of Canada. Thank sure, you, Mr. Nader. Sure, that is yeah, your time. It, it, I will certainly so, allow for a reply. Yes, Mr. Yeo. Hmm, thank you, Chair. Um, so, yes, uh, absolutely. Um, it was not a divesture, but a, a blind trust. And, and I did, uh, you know, acquire a trustee that I trusted to, to hold my shares. And, uh, and that's the way, that's the course of action that we took. So if I mentioned divesture, I, uh, that's not the case. Thank you. That is the time. Uh, turning out to Ms. Shanahan, you have the floor for... Five minutes. Well, thank you very much, Chair. And um, uh, Mr. Yo, I think you, you've managed to do something that, um, that actually should happen here at Public Accounts, which the, is to have all members equally um, um, questioning uh, what it is that, uh, that we're hearing and, and wanting to get to the truth of, um, of uh, the matter for the sake of, 
of, um, frankly, uh, for the public trust. And, uh, and that's where uh, I, for one, find your story has a number of holes in it, although it, it, um, it does come together in one way. You mentioned early on that uh, you met a gentleman, Terry Matthews. Who was that? Uh, he's a business owner in Canada and a, a billionaire, actually. So. Okay. So someone who knows how to make money. 